Add those together and we see the cost to Sheffield Wednesday of missing out on Premier League promotion. Over the 10 years, a million has departed Hillsborough. You know, we've, we've, we've really got to try and knuckle something down. And... Having all but secured their championship status for the current season, let's dive into the financial story of Sheffield Wednesday. Flashback to 2014, the Owls were stationed in the Championship. After Dave Ponchanciri took the reins in 2015, Wednesday set their sights on Premier League glory only to endure a heartbreak in the playoffs two years running. As on-field performances waned, Wednesday faced another blow with a six-point deduction for financial irregularities, ultimately leading to their relegation to League One. But two years later, Wednesday would turn things around, securing promotion back to the Championship. On the sidelines, Hillsborough saw a managerial merry-go-round. Gray, Carvajal, Bullen, Lahuke, Agnew, Bruce, Monk, Pulis, Thompson, Moore. But what about off the pitch? What happened behind the scenes? Revenue growth was steady until 2018, but a combination of on-field struggles and the impact of COVID-19 led to a shift in trajectory. Since relegation, Wednesday's revenues have been on the rise, reaching 19.3 million in 2023, albeit down from a peak of 25 million five years earlier. So what drove this? Let's dig into the revenue streams. In 2023, Wednesday's match day revenues reached 10.6 million, a 6% increase from the previous year, but still over 7 million down below their peak in 2018. Analyzing average attendance, it seems Owls fans are flocking back to Hillsborough surpassing 25,000 for the first time in five years. On the commercial front, 2023 marked a milestone for Wednesday, with revenues hitting 8.7 million, a remarkable 37% increase from the previous year. By league position, there is a correlation in the championship between revenue and league position, though recent League One years have bucked the trend. On average, Wednesday have averaged 14 million in their League One spell, making up 92% of their run in the championship. And I'm going to say this here, the belief has been there from day yes. up. Now, let's dive into profits. We witness a sharp decline in bottom lines until a significant profit in 2019, followed by continued losses until relegation where they mitigate, culminating in a 6.5 million deficit in 2023. This three-year period appears to have been the root cause of Wednesday's issues with football finance regulations. And what is happening with the profit back in 2019? What we can see is Wednesday's losses in League One were less than their previous championship run. So what is going on? We'll be back to profit in just a sec, but if you're enjoying what we do here at Numbers Behind the Net, you'd be helping us out massively if you click that subscribe button and you'll stay up to date with all our latest videos. Cheers for all your support, and now back to the PL. Let's tackle this with our PL walkthrough. Let's set the timer, grey out the revenue, and dive into staff costs. The staff cost surged as the new owners pursued Premier League promotion, but subsequent financial setbacks and relegations led to a decline. In 2023, Wednesday's staff costs amounted to 16 million, a significant decrease from the 42 million recorded in 2018, albeit that was a 14 month accounting period. Following relegation, the Owls seemed to have gone a reset. In 2023, staff costs accounted for 82% of revenues, a notable decrease from the 168% recorded five years earlier. But this may not show the full story, with several instances of players and staff not being paid on time. But how did this wage bill translate into points on the pitch for Wednesday? In League One, points have cost 150k. But back in the Championship, there's much greater volatility, with the priciest season seeing points cost 750k a piece in wages. Even by considering staff costs alone, we can observe Wednesday's shift in approach. Next up, operating costs. These have fluctuated between 5 to 10 million over the decade, but the standout is 2019, when Wednesday actually generated 1.5 million in income. This is attributed to a mysterious confidential settlement payment of 6.5 million, reportedly linked to Steve Bruce's departure from Hillsborough to Newcastle United. At EBITDA level, we again see the financial challenges of sustainably competing in the lower tiers of English football. Third, stadium facilities. 
Costs initially amounted to under a million, but in 2019, we see a 37 million profit. Now this is where we see the issues that led to Wednesday's points deduction. Hillsborough was sold to a company within the Chancery Group for £60 million, realising a £38 million profit. Sheffield Wednesday initially attempted to account for this in the 2018 financial year, a move that would have resulted in a profit for 2018, thereby enhancing their financial fair play situation. However, on review, the sale had not been registered until almost a year later, and thus Wednesday had to restate their accounts, moving the profit from 2018 into 2019. This is what landed the Owls in hot water with the EFL and their ensuing points deduction. Since the sale, Wednesday have been charged 2.6 million a year in rental costs. Finally, we move on to transfer fees. The trend continues with transfer costs escalating as Wednesday pursued Premier League promotion, peaking at 9 million in 2018. Again, a 14 month period, but this was fueled by high profile signings such as Fernando Forestieri, Adam Reach, and Jordan Rhodes. In 2020, these costs in part came down from the sale of Lucas Yao. So it's losses across the board, with a stadium sale the sole reason for profit in 2019. Yeah, the bottom line is, of course, I'm fully aware of that. But what about financial fair play? With promotion back to the championship, Wednesday will need to adhere to profit and sustainability rules. On a three-year rolling basis, average PSR losses must not exceed 5 million per year if there's no additional funding by the owners. So how much could Wednesday afford to lose in FY24? Starting with operating profit, we must also include any interest paid or received to give a full financial loss before tax. Clubs are not allowed to exclude certain costs such as youth development and women's football costs. As an estimate, we're assuming these to be 3 million. Factor these in and Wednesday could afford to lose 6.4 million in their championship season without any additional owner funding. So. You have to accept it, move on with it, and um, and just accept that's what the today brings. Finally, let's see if cash matches with the profit picture we've just seen. As usual, we're looking at the combination of cash from operations and transfer fees. Cash from operations, influenced by EBITDA line items, tells the same story. Cash flows out of Hillsborough every season, peaking at 27 million in 2018. Over the 10 years though, Sheffield Wednesday saw 98 million depart the club. Now, shifting our attention back to those transfer fees, cash again flows out until 2019 when the script then flips, cash coming in more years than not. Over the decade, however, a further 19 million has left the club in transfer cash. Add those together and we see the cost to Sheffield Wednesday of missing out on Premier League promotion. Over the 10 years, 117 million has departed Hillsborough. You know, we've, we've, we've really got to try and knuckle something down. And... So how much funding has been required? We need to tackle this in two parts. Firstly, in terms of loans and equity, cash was steadily injected until 2019. From then on though, cash was taken out of the club, meaning over the decade, 66 million has been funded. But we need to point out that cash from the stadium sale has flown in. From that 2019 sale, a further net 54 million cash has also come in respect of the stadium. But what's transpired since? Changes in the dugout continued, first with Isco Minos and lastly, Danny Roll. Whilst Wednesday may avoid relegation this season, the relationship between fans and the owners continues to deteriorate, with Chancery asking fans to fund the club's debts due to cash flow issues. But how long could this unhappy relation continue? Only time will tell.